Hey everybody, it's Never. I had a request from a couple of people to do some more information about macros, so I thought I'd start that off here with some basics and then we can build up over time. So in order to get to macros, you just want to go here and to macros, or you can do it with a slash command forward slash macro in your chat. Forward slash is the same key as the question mark, just don't push the shift key. So the first thing to understand about macros is you have two pages of them. One is general macros that are shared by all the characters on your account, and the other is just a separate page that each character has with unique macros just for them. Macros can have a name. The name has no effect on their function. It's just for you to remember which one is which, and they've got an icon. The question mark icon is special because it will change depending on what you put in the macro and you can choose anything you want which is why none of my ability icons look right because I've chosen other icons for them. One thing you need to understand is something called the global cooldown and that is a short cooldown that is triggered by certain abilities that prevents you from doing too many things at once to balance the game. If I do Fan of Knives for example you'll see that a cooldown happens on most of my other abilities. That's the global cooldown and that'll become important a little later on. So the basic concept and structure of a macro is it's just a list of instructions, kind of like a little baby script. Don't let the word script intimidate you if, you, if you're thinking of complicated scripting or anything like that. It's actually really simple and straightforward. So for an ability macro, we almost always want to start with show tooltip, all one word after a pound sign or number sign, whatever you want to call it. This will show the tooltip of the first thing that we would put in the macro that it sees. So if we wanted to cast a spell, and this is for all abilities, you just use the word cast, we can cast distract. And so then, as soon as we save that, now this will show the tooltip for distract. If we wanted to be even more tricky, we could show the tooltip for evasion right here, and it would show the tooltip for evasion. I have this macro right down there. There's the tooltip for evasion. Even though the button actually doesn't do anything, it just shows a tooltip. We could have it cast Cloak of Shadows and show the tooltip for evasion, and it'll still cast Cloak of Shadows. So it gives you some flexibility, and this becomes important if you have multiple functions in a macro, but you wanted to specify what the tooltip shows. So that's show tooltip. And it's a good idea to just start pretty much every macro with that, if unless you run out of room. You do have a 255 character limit, but it's rare that I ever hit that. So making a basic ability macro is pretty simple. We cast, and then you saw that you can shift-click anything in your spellbook, and it'll just put the name of it right there. That's really handy because it keeps you from misspelling things. So... Let's put Fan of Knives there, we'll save it, and then this button will now do Fan of Knives. Real easy. So we can get a little more complicated and do something called a Cast Sequence. Cast Sequence, Fan of Knives, comma, and you can put a space or not. I like to do it because it makes it cleaner and it's easier for me to figure out what's going on. So we'll do cast sequence, fan of knives, and then let's pop over and put in stealth. So this cast sequence, it, the first time I push the button, it'll do fan of knives. The second time it will do stealth. Fan of knives, stealth. Pretty good, but let's say that we wanted to make it a little different. We can do reset equals and then a number. The number equals the time in seconds. So let me kick stealth off here. So what I can do is I can push this fan of knives and then push it again and it'll do stealth or I can wait for that reset to expire fan of knives and if I wait five seconds it will change from stealth the next in the sequence back to fan of knives. It resets automatically the first time you do it if you don't wait for the reset because it hits the end of the list. So that gives you even more control. A lot of times if you've got a sequence of abilities that you want to use when you're running around in questing, you could do ability number one, ability number two, ability number three, with a reset of about 10 seconds. So that if you don't reach the end of your list, but the mob is dead and you want to go fight the next thing, by the time 10 seconds has passed, it'll reset so that you can start over again without having to go through the sequence 
uh, starting in the middle on a new mob. So that's what cast sequence does. It's pretty handy and uh, I, I use it for a few things, although most of the time I find that I like a separate button to push for each ability. So sometimes you'll want to put together two abilities in one. This will depend on which abilities you're using and whether or not it'll work. This is where the global cooldown comes in. So for example, Shadow Dance. Shadow Dance is off the global cooldown, meaning that it does not trigger the global cooldown. You can use it even if global cooldown is happening. So I could put Shadow Dance in there and then I could also put Fan of Knives. And then we'll see that if I push this button, it will cast Shadow Dance and immediately do Fan of Knives. There's both, Shadow Dance and Fan of Knives. And you can stack up some other things on there. If we go back here and I do another Fan of Knives, you'll notice that Evasion is not on the global cooldown either. So I could actually throw that in there if I wanted to do all of them. Even though Shadow Dance is on the global is on cooldown right now, if I push this macro again, it'll do Evasion and Fan of Knives. And it will do Shadow Dance as soon as it's off cooldown. If I wanted to see the tooltip for Evasion, I could just put it right here, and it would show the tooltip for that instead. So you can pick and choose. The basic function of macros is kind of contained in all of that information. You can use uh, you can use items instead if you want to. Just use the use command, and then you could put in Vicral Drinking Horn as well, and have this really wild macro that shows the tooltip for Evasion, Cast Shadow Dance, Fan of Knives, and Evasion, and uses the Vicral Drinking Horn. Everything all at once. So that's the basics of macros. I hope that that's useful for you. Before I go, I want to go over one more thing, and that is the stuff that macros can't do. Say hi to my cat. Uh, macros cannot play the game for you. So it can't check to see if a buff is up and then cast a different ability if it's up versus if it's not. It really just, it, you've got to be able to push the button and it's just a way to cram a few things together into one key. Next time I'll go over things called, my cats are fighting. Uh, next time I'll go over context, which lets you give more details to how your macros work and decide when it does certain things. Even though I just said it can't do stuff like that, there are some exceptions. And that's what we'll go over next time. So thank you for watching. Please share the video to get your friends caught up to speed on macros. And please like and subscribe so you can see the next video that comes out with even more details on how to make really awesome macros that can do some amazing things. Okay, thanks, bye.